Welcome back everybody to my Spring Forward Into Horror series for the month of May. Today's film is a film from 1991, but was actually filmed in 1989, so it has that 80s feel to it. The film I'm going to be talking about is a trauma film called There's Nothing Out There. In case you haven't heard of this film and don't know what it's about, it's when a horror film buff tries to warn his friends who are spending spring break in a house in the woods where have we heard that trope before of impending danger they scoff at him that is until a huge mutant frog starts to pick them off one by one Like I said, it does have an 80s feel to it, and that's one of the things I love most about it. It opens in a video store, which is definitely a very nostalgic thing, even though like back when they made this, it was very common for them to be around. Not so much anymore. There's horror movie posters on the walls of this video store, and it's actually cross-cut with the action like the poster shows what's happening and it's just a really cool executed and edited sequence perfectly shot the green visualizer that the credits are played over reminds me of that visualizer or windows music player or something like that giving my age away a bit there uh, but it's that basic music player thing that you'd put the visualizer on. I think the original Xbox had it on it as well. That type of visualizer is just really cool. A little bit nostalgic uh, because there's not many things that actually do that visualizer thing anymore. So the music is perfect in the film. The transitions of the film, natural or artificial, are well placed and or executed. It seems like it was very well planned and thought out. The editing was actually thought of when they were shooting it. Oh, this would be a good place to put a natural transition in. We can't really get a natural transition, so we'll just put an artificial one. It all just seems perfectly placed, well executed and stuff like that. So editing is awesome, especially the match cuts that they actually have in it. There's a few in it. I can't think of any off the top of my head, but there was definitely a few. The creature POVs are great. The meta elements are well mixed into the story and dialogue. Horror film buff talks about all these horror movie tropes and stuff like that. Sometimes when he's talking about it, it actually describes what he and the other survivors are, are doing at that time, which I think is uh, really cool. Kind of makes this film stand out amongst all those other like slasher films, creature features, and all those. So I really love that aspect of it. Being a film, a horror film buff myself, I could definitely see myself doing that. The creature effects in the film are well executed. They don't look great, but that's they stand the test of time. That's a great thing to have when you're dealing with like an 80s film that actually deals with practical effects. CG might look dated, but for the most part, practical effects still stand up and they just look good. The, the gore effects look really cool, look great. I was reading uh, the, the note after this. Some of the stunts nearing the end of the film are actually really cool because they naturally incorporate film equipment. To me, seeing like the film equipment like this kind of felt like a film that was set in the 80s. Say a filmmaker grew up watching all these films, saw all these crew, like all these films that had crew visible or equipment visible and decided to make a creature feature that honored all of that. And it's like, this one's it. And it came out in the same, like that era of like 80s films that I just love and it'd be the kind of film that I would make to honor like that era of like creature features and then kind of spoof some of them by adding 
film equipment. Yeah, the overall use of film equipment in the film as a narrative element actually is very cool and works very well. The pacing and the flow of the film is awesome. I can't think of negative thing I had towards the film. I just love every single aspect of the film. I guess a more modern version of like this style of spoof I guess you could say but not really a spoof would be um, a film I'm gonna be reviewing in a couple days called Cabin in the Woods. Now if you've seen it you know that there's a ton of horror cliches in that film. The title is even a horror movie cliche and I've seen that one before and I'd say this one's a lot better and positive it was produced by Troma so honestly if this was my first introduction to Troma that wasn't like a mainstream type of film like the Toxic Avenger I think I'm gonna like what Troma has to offer so I'm really excited to check out more Troma films if you have any suggestions for trauma films that aren't exactly that well known or mainstream like the toxic avenger i'll watch that one at some point but any of like the lesser known ones put it in the comments i like those lesser known films a lot more than the mainstream ones yeah if i had to give this film a rating i would give it a 9.9 .9. i guess my only negative thing is i didn't make it <laughs> If I made it, yeah, I'd probably give it a 10, but then then I'd be biased. No, I'd still give it a 10 no matter what, so. You know, maybe I should just give this one a 10. Yeah, you know what, I'll just do that. Scratch my 9.9, I'm, I'm giving it a 10. I hope you like this uh, review of There's Nothing Out There. Originally released in 1991, but was actually filmed in 1989, but shelved for a couple years. I highly recommend this film, especially if you like creature features, like horror comedies, along the lines of like gremlins, films like that. I guess trauma films, teen horror films, like uh, if you're a fan of horror you should check this one out if you haven't already. Don't forget to comment any suggestions in the comments. I'll see you in the next one.